What are hyper casual games? A hyper casual game is a very easy to play mobile video game. These games can be picked up and played by anyone at any time thanks to their simplistic UI and gameplay. A tutorial is typically a couple sentences long at most, but in some cases they're non-existent. In other words, the gameplay is purposely dumbed down to the point where you can typically figure out what to do by just randomly hitting the screen. It's possible that sometimes you'll finish levels without even knowing what you were supposed to do. I genuinely think a monkey could beat some of these games. It requires that little skill, and rarely do they have any kind of consequences for failing a level. Not to mention that levels are often very, very short. Some of these games have infinite looped mechanics that make them very replayable, leading to their addictive nature. The design and visuals of the games are always very clean and simplistic, and the story is often as simplified as possible or non-existent. Sometimes the plot just doesn't even make sense or is incohesive, so you'll never have to worry about following along. Hypercasual games are typically played while multitasking in short bursts, as opposed to long play sessions. The majority of these games are free to play and make most of their money off ads, and trust me, you'll be seeing a lot, a lot of ads. Some people argue that hyper-casual games are a business model rather than a genre, and complain about the level of quality that these games typically are. This genre of gaming has been taking over the mobile gaming scene for years. When you look at the most downloaded games of 2022 so far, you can easily see a few hyper-casual games sitting comfortably there, and that's been the case for years now. The genre is no doubt very popular, yet very very polarizing and a lot of people don't even know of its existence. I'm sure some people are confused about the difference between a casual game and a hyper casual game, so let me explain. Casual games can obviously share a lot of the same characteristics, but casual games have a lot more depth to them, whether that depth be story, gameplay, or some other mechanic. Casual games can also pose some kind of challenge. Meanwhile, hyper casual games are made to be as simple to pick up as possible and purposely avoid any kind of challenge. A good example is Temple Run. Temple Run has simple controls and can be picked up and played with little to no tutorial by most people. However, the game has multiple kinds of power-ups you can get in the game and in between runs, along with different kinds of obstacles that you need to avoid in different ways. And once you die, that's it. You start over and good luck. Whereas in Tall Man Run, you avoid obstacles by going left and right, cross the finish line, and that's it. You have the option to make your character bigger to try and fight the giant guy at the end of the levels, but you literally just don't have to. You'll move on no matter what. I've played a lot of these hyper casual games on my channel and made fun of them accordingly, but a lot of people in my comments don't seem to know what a hyper casual game is or know why they exist in the first place. So let me tell you about the reality of hyper casual games. I'll explain why they exist, why I think they're problematic, and if there's any good that actually comes out of them. To start, I'll need to talk about the game that's commonly credited as the first hyper-casual game, Flappy Bird. I'm assuming most of you guys already know this game, but if you don't, Flappy Bird is a game that was made in 2013 for mobile devices. All you do is tap on the screen to make the bird jump a bit, and you have to avoid the moving obstacles. That's it! To me, it feels more like a simple arcade rage game, not a hyper-casual game. At least, not at first. Cue the Vsauce music. Flappy Bird was a massively viral game for its time. It gained over 50 million downloads in less than a year. Yes, it has a lot of the characteristics a modern hyper-casual game has. The visuals, the gameplay, and mechanics are all stupidly simple, and the game is endless. But it's not an easy game, or at least not for most people, which in my book pushes the game over to the casual genre. But to properly categorize Flappy Bird, I need to answer the question, are hyper-casual games a genre or a business model? This is kind of a big question to answer, and I do think it's objective, but here's my take. So according to Wikipedia, a video game genre is an informal classification of a video game based on how it is played, rather than the visuals or narrative elements. So to start, I think it makes little sense to call hyper-casual games a genre. Between the games, there is no consistency of how they're played, which is the defining part of what makes a gaming genre a genre. Yes, they're all simple, which you could argue is the main feature, but at the end of the day, that's a difficulty scale and not a genre. A hyper-casual game can be anything from a runner, to making ice cream, to shooting aliens, to holding your finger on the screen to chop fruit. They're all mindless and easy, but they just don't play the same. For example, I'd say Twerk Race 3D, a hyper-casual game, is in the same genre as Subway Surfers, a casual game, but they just have different skill requirements. With first-person shooter games, it's very straightforward. You shoot in first person, and that's it. Genres are not broken down in difficulty, so I don't know why it'd be an exception here. So no, I would not call hyper casual games a genre. It's a good name for a category on the App Store, I suppose, but that would be all I'd do. So do I think it's a business model? 
Sure. So Flappy Bird is the game that proved to everybody that you don't need a lot of money or resources to develop a successful mobile game. People found out they can make a lot of money with not much effort, so of course people took advantage of that. In fact, these games were often developed in a matter of weeks or days. This is how you make a hyper casual game. You first come up with a concept. Then, you make a prototype. Here's where you typically find publishers, assuming you're not already part of a team. Then you test the game. Here's where you find out if your game is going to be very successful or flawed. All right, I totally have this next part memorized and I did not steal it directly from a website. The key metrics to show if the game has potential are one day retention and seven day retention. If the game has one day retention of more than 40%, then it moves on. If the KPIs are not met, the game is killed. It makes no sense to put more effort into a game that is not likely to succeed. So if it passes the test, you release the game and you make the big bucks. Now here's what you wanna do while making the game. Target as wide of an audience as possible. Make sure everything in the game is as simple as possible so whether they're a kid or an elderly person they can play it just the same. Have low storage requirements. Pack as little as possible into that bad boy so no matter how old or bad the device is it will be able to download and run your game. But make sure that it is prone to crashing. I don't care if you have the best phone on the market. If your game isn't making that phone crash and lag then you optimize the game a little bit too too well. Make it low commitment. Fuck long play sessions. All levels are a minute long maximum. Make sure the animations suck. Make sure. And most importantly, put ads everywhere. Finished a level? Ad. Lost a level? Well, show them mercy by letting them skip the level if they watch an ad. Oh, so they beat a level and gained a bunch of coins that don't do anything in your game. Well, uh, be generous and offer them a chance to double their coins at the cost of an advertisement. Don't be afraid to constantly give the player bonus levels or pointless cosmetics at the cost of an ad. Be generous and offer them useless power-ups at the start of every level at the cost of an ad. If you're feeling daring, play an ad when the game is open for the first time. Make sure ads are always on the bottom of the screen or in one of the corners. No exceptions. And if you're feeling really daring, make sure you put a bubble floating around the screen that when you tap it, it does nothing but play an advertisement. You get no bonus, no nothing. It just plays an ad. And the kicker is, it's always on the screen. It never goes away. Even when you click it, it just stays on the screen. And I know what you might be thinking, all of these and I know what you might be thinking, all of these ads seem very annoying. Well, that's because they are! Well, that's why you need to have an option where people can pay for a premium service that permanently removes all ads from the game and nothing else. Don't be afraid to show that promotion as soon as the game is opened for the first time ever. With any luck, somebody will think that you have to pay for the game to play it and then boom, you can easily scam somebody. Okay, I know it may sound like I'm over-exaggerating with how many advertisements these games have, but I promise you, I am not. I have played the entirety of a few of these games and each time I have spent more time time watching advertisements than playing the actual game. And when I split up the time even more to account for cutscenes or any filler, the time I spent actually playing these games goes down even more. Given just how simple some of these games are and how much filler and advertisements these games have in them, it's hard for me to even call some of these games games. What I'm trying to say is I feel like oftentimes these games go beyond hyper casual. It gets to the point where these games feel like they're just apps to load more ads for you to download more apps. And that's exactly what these developers want. They want this endless cycle of you downloading games, playing games, watching advertisements just so you can do that all again with a new game. Sometimes you can play these apps on airplane mode so you don't get any of these ads. But then sometimes you'll get a pop-up saying internet connection is required despite that just not being the case. You'll get these pop-ups on single-player games that literally don't need internet connection for anything but to show you advertisements. But because they make most of their money from ads, they're not going to let you play these games without internet connection. Anyway... Thanks, Flappy Bird. And as a side note, I read a bunch of articles on this topic and chose to address what I viewed as the essentials. There's more information on how these games are made and this topic in general. If you want more details, all of my sources are in the description. I think the best way to define a hyper-casual game is by using it as more of an umbrella term to define the business model of making these cheap, low-effort and soulless games with the intention of maximizing profits. Because that's really the main connecting tissue here. Alright, now you know what a hyper-casual game 
game is along with how and why they're made. Let's now talk about how to identify them and what the most popular types of these games are, and then we'll close off this video by addressing the title. Are hyper casual games ruining gaming? So you know all of those awful mobile game ads. Ads where you pull the pin. Ads that have text saying something like, it's harder than it looks. Ads with very confusing and complex stories that show very little gameplay. It's safe to say that most of those ads, if not all of them, are ads for hyper casual games. Oftentimes they intentionally show misleading gameplay or even trick you with characters from other media that they don't own. They will do anything to get you to download their game, including promises of free Robux. Needless to say, it's a total scam. These tricks may be obvious to identify if you're old enough, but kids don't know any better. And you can't blame them for thinking this ad is for an official Minecraft game, since they use Steve and other Minecraft characters. Even if the ad doesn't mislead you, they are still often very obnoxious. So basically, if you see an annoying ad, avoid it. There is no good that can come out of it. If you see text that says something like, it's harder than it looks, just know that's a lie and the game is probably just as easy as it looks. So as far as gameplay goes, all of these hyper casual games just copy each other. So once you've played a few of them, then you've really played them all. I think the most common style that I've at least seen are these runner games. I showed a few examples of these games earlier in the video, but basically all of these games are very bad versions of Subway Surfers and Temple Run. I have played so many of these games that never once have I been impressed, nor have I ever seen much innovation, if any at all. There's not much to get into with this style that we haven't already talked about. Yet one of these games is the seventh most downloaded game of the year, despite not being any different from the rest. Another popular type of these hyper casual games are mini game compilations, where every level is different, but it's all tied together with one theme. These also aren't original or impressive at all. They may seem more more advanced with the variety that they have, but it's all surface level and they just use the same repetitive mechanics from other games. The only difference is they rotate between them. There's a type of game where you have to draw something to fill in a picture or solve a puzzle. These games are probably the worst type of hyper casual games in my opinion. You never have to draw properly in these games, nor do you even have to draw that close to the spot you're supposed to. You can really speedrun all of these games by just squiggling in random spots. I really just don't understand the appeal to these games specifically at all. I have noticed that the story games give the most value, not because they're good, but because they're so bad they become good. My favorite is Couples Life. If you've seen my video on it, you know the full story, but to quickly sum it up, it's the most toxic, inconsistent, nonsense love story about an influencer who goes to great lengths for content mixed with random mundane everyday tasks. It makes absolutely no sense and there's some genuinely funny moments. In fact, I believe the only only time I've given any hyper casual game any kind of credit is with their comedy. On a rare occasion, some of the story driven games can be unironically funny. I would even go as far to say that if some of these writers were truly passionate about the writing in their games, then some of these games would actually genuinely be good. But they're not. These games are soulless and clearly made with no passion behind them whatsoever. Also, I have yet to find a truly endless hyper casual game. Every one of these games that I have played until the end is technically endless in the sense that you can play more, but one trick I've noticed is that they just repeat the level starting over from the beginning, but the level numbers keep going up. So if you're not paying attention, you could easily mistake these for brand new levels, despite the fact there is no difference. You're literally just replaying the same game. So many of these games aren't any more endless than a linear game despite what they make it seem like. They just reuse the same levels but lie about the numbers. Alright, we get it, these games suck, but why do people play them. This will sound redundant and that's because at this point it is, but people like the hyper casual nature of these games. They enjoy the low commitment and to be able to play them anytime with no context. Many people put up with the ads because they're playing these games in brief moments of boredom or while multitasking anyway. And you have to remember these are mobile games we're talking about. The audience for PC and console gaming are way different than the audience for mobile gaming. The average mobile gamer does not have play sessions nearly as long as a traditional gamer. I don't even think they drink Mountain Dew. I feel like the best way to describe the difference is going to the movie theaters versus watching TikTok on your phone. You can argue all day on which is better, but at the end of the day, it's all preference. The movie at the theater is most likely more high quality and made with more love and care than whatever is on your For You page. But some people prefer the low quality, fast paced, and random videos on their phone. And honestly, I get it. As someone who grew up playing way too many video games, it's hard for me to look at these hyper 
casual games and think about how someone could genuinely enjoy them. But not everybody grew up the same way as me and think about video games in the same way. For a lot of people, these games are just another app on their phone to waste time on. I think these games are obnoxious and lazily made with the sole intention of making money. And while those are fair reasons to dislike something, that alone is not causing any harm. Here's what I think is actually causing harm. The first thing is the stolen characters they use in their ads, along with the other lies their ads have. They're not only lying to the consumer and tricking them, but are also stealing material that isn't theirs. I think putting pop-ups to spend money on the game before the game even begins is bad, as some people may think they have to pay to play these free games. These games are downloaded by a wide variety of people, but of course many of these games and ads are still often targeted at kids, which of course amplifies all of these problems, but the worst thing is all of these very inappropriate ads that are shown in these games. Time after time I see sexual ads that show way more than any young kid should see. I'm not only talking about girls in their underwear, but sex toys and directly sexual lines. Some of these ads seem to glorify objectifying women, which I'm not okay with in general, but especially not when it's shown to impressionable children. Some of these ads are complete clickbait, but others are linked to real sexual games that kids should not be playing. But enough about the children. How will this affect the gamers? Are hyper-casual games actually ruining gaming? No. Sure, it would be awesome if these developers were using their talent to make some actually good games, but all hyper-casual games really do is introduce new people to gaming. A lot of people actually start with hyper-casual games and then slowly transition out into more gaming. So in other words, hyper-casual games are the gateway drug of gaming. For better or for worse, that's how it is for a lot of people. Yes, these games are bad and problematic in a lot of ways, but they're not directly hurting the gaming community in the way you might think. But let me know what you think or if there's anything that I missed. So we're hyper-casual games here to stay? I don't know. Probably. The more I dug into that question specifically, the more I found stuff that just kind of made me lose interest. There's talks of ultra casual games and hybrid casual games that may take over, and at this point, I, I don't care about these subgenres of hyper casual games. We're just splitting hairs here. So, what I'm going to say is that these games have their audiences, and with more and more people using mobile devices, these audiences aren't going anywhere. As time goes on, there will be more and more competition, which should should mean that it will take more and more to stand out. But I imagine these types of games will be around for a long, long time. As long as the developers keep getting paid well, that is. With that being said, Google is updating their policy revolving around ads for mobile games effective September 30th, which would basically make ads less frequent and less intrusive, meaning less money for the developers. But we'll just have to wait and see how that really affects the industry. That's all I got. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic Tuesday.